Hey friends, I hope you are having an amazing day and are ready to do some crochet with me. This is kids crochet or crochet for kids, whatever you want to call it. And I am Tanya Hamilton. I'm excited to be here with you today. We're actually going to do something a little bit different. We are going to crochet, so don't worry about that. But I thought it would be great for us to learn how to read patterns. And so I brought with me a couple of patterns for us to look at examples, but also create a project. And the project we're going to create is a granny square. A simple little granny square. I've created one right here for you. And we're going to make one together while we learn to read a pattern. So let's head over to the table and I'll share with you the supplies, what you're going to need, and we'll get into our project today. All right, so here we are. We've got some supplies, and obviously one of the things that we're going to need is a crochet hook. And I've been using, throughout a lot of our projects, I've been using this particular hook, which is a J. It says J10, and then it says it is a six millimeter hook. I like to use it when I'm crocheting with you all because it is bigger and it makes the stitches bigger because the hook is bigger. So it makes it easier for us to see as we're working together on these projects. So we've got our hook. I've got a pair of scissors, always handy to be able to cut that yarn. I have a plastic yarn needle, and I will also link that in the, the information below. I like the plastic one when I'm dealing with yarn. It doesn't seem to cause a problem. It glides very easily. It's just great to use. And we'll use this at the end when we're weaving in our ends. Of course, we're going to need some yarn. Now, I used this yarn for this project, for this granny square, but I'm going to use a little different color palette for the one that we're going to create today. So I've got some light pink, some dark pink, and some yellow, and I think the pattern is going to be light pink here in the center, then dark pink, and then yellow for my outside. Now, I said we were going to learn to do patterns, and so one of the things that we're going to need is a pattern. Now, I'm going to move some things to the side here. I've got a couple of different patterns here. This pattern I printed off the the our Michael's website. So I will share a link down below in the description of this particular project. Here's the front of it and this project, which we have as um, a project on our Michael's website, was designed by Brett Barra. And it's a really quick and easy pattern. And I thought that would be a great start for us as we are learning to read patterns. Another thing that I brought with me today is a book that I actually bought at my local Michaels store. Let me show you the front of the book. And it's 101 crochet stitches. Now, your store may not have this, but I bet you your store does have some type of a crochet book. Maybe different granny squares, maybe different uh, stitches or a total pattern, some patterns all together of things. Look in your book section. Um, they're located in different areas of different stores. So look around, you'll find those books and see if you can find a crochet book at your store. So this is the one I got and I am gonna talk about this pattern when we get to it. So let me set that aside because I really wanna focus on the granny square right now. Let's get started with that. Okay, remember this is our finished project. And so I'm going to talk through it and then we're going to do it together. So when you have a pattern, you're going to have your materials. I called it supplies today. It's the same thing. So we've got some yarn, we've got a hook, we've got a tapestry needle. That's what they're calling this. I called it a yarn needle. A tapestry needle is the same. 
Um, maybe just a little different. Maybe a tapestry needle is a little bit more special. I don't know, but this works. This is what I've used for years, uh, this type of a needle. And scissors. So we've got those supplies. It tells us what our finished size should be. I'm not going to be so concerned with this because they're telling me that I need to use a five millimeter crochet hook. And I've already told you guys I'm using a J. It's a six millimeter. So bigger number, bigger project. It's going to make this bigger than this. So my finished size is not going to be the same because my hook size in it isn't the same. And I'm OK with that. Then we get down into our instructions. So we have our first set of instructions and it tells us that with our hook and any color of yarn of our choice, we're going to, and then it goes into the stitches that we're going to do. And then it tells us number two, round one. So this first line is telling us about the foundation that we're going to build. And from there, we're going to go around and then fasten off, it says fasten off. And then number three, gonna do round two. That's this color right here. So we've got our foundation, which is hidden in there. You can't see it. Round one, that's step two. Round two, that's step three. And then round four, or round, excuse me, round three on step four is this, the, my outer edge where I stopped. Uh, the writer of this pattern does tell us that if you want to continue, you can, and you would just continue by repeating this last pattern as many times as you want. You can make this really, really big, and you could change lots of colors. You could have it all the same color. It's completely up to you. The last thing this pattern tells me is how to finish it off, and when they say finishing it off, they're talking about taking one square and another square and connecting those two together. And they give us an idea of how we could do that. You guys, there's lots of ways that you can connect granny squares. There's not just one. They're offering one suggestion, but there's lots of, lots of ways you can do that. All right, so that is our pattern. Let's do it together. And we're gonna talk about all of these things that they say here, what they mean, and how we do what they're saying in our crochet pattern. All right, so I'm going to leave this right here so we can see it, and we'll refer to that round one, round two, round, you know, excuse me, round one, round two, round three as we go. All right, I said I was going to start with a lighter pink. Um, granny squares are also, we've talked about having stash, stash busters before. Granny squares are definitely, for me, a stash buster. That means when I have a little piece of, of yarn, you know, a little ball of yarn, that's a great one to do. This isn't going to take a lot of a single color. So if you have not watched any of our other videos, please go back and watch those videos if you're like, well, what kind of stitch are you doing? How are you connecting the yarn? And you have that sort of a question when I put the yarn on my hand and I create that tension there. And if you have a question about that, please go back and watch our previous videos. They're all linked below and they're going to help you with each of those steps. OK, so let me get this on. I'm going to leave myself a tail to start with. That's my tail. And I'm going to get my first uh, hook loop on the hook and I'm ready to go. All right. It says with an H five millimeter crochet hook. I'm using a J. Remember that I'm using a J six millimeter crochet hook. You use what you have and any color yarn of your choice. Light pink for me on this one. And it says chain five. OK, I can do that. I'm going to do that and then I'm going to stop there. So one. Two. three, four, and five. Now, the next thing it says is join chain. CH means chain. So CH5, chain five. Join CH, that's this chain, this last chain I have, with a slip stitch, SLST. 
That is an abbreviation for slip stitch. Looking to see, sometimes patterns will have the abbreviations for you. I don't see them on this pattern. Um, I know that in this book, it will tell me right here, there's a key and it says, a chain is a CH and a slip stitch is an SLST. So this and also this is in US. I know that our friends um, in the UK have a different naming convention for some crochet stitches, but this is gonna be US naming convention, okay? Um, if you're in the US, don't worry about it. That's what we're doing, okay? So we did chain five, join chain, join CH with a slip stitch to form a ring. Okay, so I've got my chains, I've got my loop on a hook. I'm gonna go back to the very first one right here. I'm gonna stick my needle in and I'm gonna loop over and pull through. That's my slip stitch and it made a ring, just like they said, to form a ring. Done, okay. Now, round one. Round one says to start with CH3, chain three. And then it tells me something in parentheses. It says counts as DC, that's double chain, I mean, excuse me, double crochet, counts as double crochet here and throughout. So this is telling me that every time the pattern asks me to do a chain three, that it is also going to count as a double crochet. We'll talk about that in a minute and why that's important. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. Chain three, and then I have a semicolon. So that's the end of that little step. So let me do that step, chain three. So one, two, and three. Now the next thing it says is dub two, double crochet, that DC double crochet into ring. And I got a semicolon, so that's the end of that piece. So let's do that. So a double crochet, I'm gonna loop over, I'm gonna go inside the hole right there of my ring and complete my double crochet. So that's one, loop over, go back in the ring, and that is two. Okay, now, Let's go back and look at this. It says chain three counts as double crochet here and throughout, two double crochet into ring. So when I look at what I have, I have my chain three and two double crochet. It's the pattern says this counts as a double crochet. So when I see this, I see one, two, three. I'm counting it like a double crochet. So three double crochet is how I need to count it. Now, I have an asterisk that's important to note, and it'll we'll have some information about that in a minute. But after that, it says chain two, CH2, chain two. Then it says three double crochets, DCs into ring. So I'm going to do a chain two, and then I'm going to do three double crochets into the ring. All right. So that's one chain, two chains. Then I'm gonna do three double crochets into the ring. So looped over and I'm gonna complete that first double crochet. We have a video all about double crochet. If you're not familiar with the step, uh, this step stitch, please go back and, and watch that. Alrighty, so we've got one, two, three. So we did our chain two and three double crochets and so then there's a semicolon, right? And then it says REP, that is short for repeat. Repeat from asterisk. So if you're a musician, you may know about that repeat symbol that tells you to go back and keep doing it, okay? And it tells me how many times I need to. So it says, Repeat from the asterisk two more times for a total of three, three double crochet clusters. I'm gonna, we're gonna talk about that in a minute, but let's do the steps that it said. So two times, I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna chain two, three double crochet into ring. 
Then I'm going to go back here, chain two, three double crochet into ring. Okay, so let's do that right now. Chain two, and then three double crochets into the ring. There's one, and two, and three. And then I've, that was my first repeat. Now I'm gonna do a second repeat. So chain two, 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 hang on, let me double check myself, yes. All right, then I'm gonna do three double crochets into the ring, one, two, and three. Okay, so it says, do it two more times, check, did that, for a total of three, three double crochet clusters. Now, I've got that one, so there's one, there's two, and there's three, and this is where I began, and it said that that was going to count as a double crochet too, but this is what it's talking about. One, two, three double crochet clusters, and there's a period, and then it says CH2, chain two, let me do that, one and two, and join to top of BEG, BEG, beginning. So join to top of beginning chain three. What does that mean? Where I began right here is this chain three. There's my three chains. So there's the one, two, and three right there. And it's saying that I need to take this stitch and join it to this stitch right here with, and it doesn't tell me with the slip stitch, but that's how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to join to that by just taking and putting my needle, a hook into that, that loop, pulling through and pulling through again, and that joined that together. Okay. And then it says fasten off. So when I fasten off, I pull out a length like that, and I clip. Okay. Now, some folks tie off a knot. I do not tie off knots. It's not something that I was trained to do, but if you were trained to tie off knots or if that's something that you want to do, please feel free to tie this off on a knot. I'm going to wait and I'll deal with all of my ends in a minute. And that's what there, this is going to come in handy because I'll weave all my ends into the project. So we've done step one, step two. Now we're on to step three and it's round two. So changing colors. Let's pull in our dark pink now. And it says, join any color yarn of your choice to any chain two space. CH two SP. That's chain two space. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my yarn and these spots that you see right here, there's one here, there's one here, right here, and right here. Those are my chain two spaces. So I'm going to go here into this one and I'm going to connect right there. And when I connect, the way that I join actually creates a chain. So I take my needle and I pull it through my hole there and I grab the yarn and bring it back through and then I yarn over and pull through. When I yarn over and pull through, that actually has created a chain. So the next step when it tells me is chain three, for me, because of the way that I joined it, I've already chained one. I'm going to chain one more, two more. So that makes a chain three. You can see it right there. You see those three chains, one, two, three. So it says chain three, and then I'm going to two double crochets into the chain two space. I'm going to stop right there. Let's get those two double crochets into this space. There we go. So now I've got 
that section done. And then it says CH chain two. Let me get that chain two, one and two. Then it tells me three double crochet into same chain two space. So it's saying in this very same space that I've been working, I need to put three more double crochets in here. This is what's going to happen. Right here is like what I've just done. Now I'm going to create this piece. And this makes, and it tells me even this, what it says, corner space made. That's what's happening right there. I'm making this corner space. And that space right there is where the next row is going to connect into. So I've chained two. Now I'm going to put three double crochets into this chain two space in the lighter pink. So there's two and three. All right. So we've done that part. Uh, to see. Do, 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 do. This is the row I'm on. All right. Three couples in, into same two chain space, corner space made. Yes, we did that. Oh, we've got an asterisk. We know what that means. It's going to tell us to do some repeating again. So we're going to now chain two. Then we're going to three double crochet into the next chain two space. So let's start right there. So I'm going to chain two, one, Two. And it said three double crochets into the next chain two space. So here we go. This is my next space. Let's put three double crochets into it. That's one, two, and three. So it said chain two, three double crochet into next chain two space. Then it wants me to chain two, three double crochets into same chain two space. So it's asking me to put it in the same spot. And it tells me that the corner space is made. So basically what we did here, one and two chains, and then I'm going to go three more cro double crochets into this chain two space. So there's one. There's two. And then there's three. Okay. Now I get to the end and it says corner space made. Repeat REP. Repeat from asterisk, there's my asterisk, two more times. Okay, so I'm going to go back here and I'm going to do this whole step again. And then I'm going to go back here and I'm going to do it one more time. All right, so it starts with a chain two, chain one, chain two. And then I'm going to go into the next chain two space and do three double crochets. That's one, two, and three. And then I'm going to do two chains, one and two. When I do those two chains, it's making that space right there. And now in the same space, I'm going to do three double crochet again. One, two, and three. So that was one repeat and I need to do one more repeat. So chain two. And then I'm going to do three double crochets into this next chain two space. So that's one, two, and three. And then I'm going to chain two and three more double crochet into this chain two space. So that's one, two, oh, my hands are sticky. So one and two and one more. And 
three. All right, so we've got those three double crochets, and now what does it tell us to do? We did our one repeat, our two repeats, and that's what here it said two more times. Did that? It says chain two, ch2, chain two, and join to top of beginning of chain three and fasten off. So let's chain the two, one piece at a time here done. The next thing it says, join to the top of beginning chain three. Here's my chain three. One, two, and three. There's my third stitch right there. So I'm going to go into it. And I'm going to pull through, pull through. So that joined it. And then fasten off. I pull out a length and I cut it. I've got my tail there. All right, so at this point, we have completed round one and round two, and now we're going to go to round three, which on our pattern is step four. All right, I'm going to grab another color. It says join any color yarn of your choice. So if you wanted to make this all a solid color, you totally could, and you wouldn't um, cut it at that point, you would just keep going. So if you wanted to do all one color, maybe you have a yarn that changes colors, then that's great. Do that and just keep going instead of cutting it like I have been doing. All right, so what's it gonna tell me to do? Join any color yarn of your choice to the center, chain two, of any corner space in previous round. So it's really specific about this. It wants me to start in a corner space and it wants me to start in that chain two. And so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go right here to this corner space and I'm gonna join. And remember I said that when I join, the way that I join makes a single crochet. I mean, excuse me, makes a chain. Pardon me, when I join, I end up making a chain one right there. So the next thing it's going to tell me to do is chain three. So I've got one, two, and three. So there's my three, my three chains that it's told me to do. So then it tells me two double crochet, two DC into chain two SP, chain two space. Um, so let's do those two double crochets, and it's going to be in this same space right here. Let's do it. So that's one and two. Okay. Then it says chain two. Okay. I'm going to do that. Kind of getting used to this. The next thing it says is three double crochet into same chain two space, corner space made. Okay, I can do that. So I'm gonna three double crochets into the same space. And this is what's gonna make that corner. We've done this before, it's not a new thing for us. There's two double crochets and then one more. And we've got three, okay. Now it says chain two, and then three double crochet into next chain two space. Got it. So chain two, one, two, and then three double crochets into this space right here. All right. And I've got all these tails hanging out, but I'm just gonna crochet around them. Oh, double crochet. Loop over and go in that space. So that's one, two, and three. Okay, I did that. Um, so what we've done so far is we did the chain three, two double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. This was all in that one. Then it said chain two, 
and go into the next chain two space and do three double crochets. Did that. Now we've got our asterisk, so that tells us we're going to do some repeating again. And it says chain two, and then it has a bracket, and it says three double crochet, comma, chain two, comma, three double crochet. So chain two, and then do all that's in that bracket. So I'm going to chain two, that's one, two, and it says three double crochets. So we're going to make that corner like we've done before. One, and this is all in this stitch right here. And it does tell me that all of this is in the next corner space. So one, two, and three. It says chain two, one, and two. And then it says three double crochet. So that's one, two, and three. And that was all in that corner space. Then it tells me to chain two and three double crochets into the next chain two space until I reach the next corner space, okay? So the reason why it's saying it has that space and it has a parentheses with an S in it, and then it says until you reach the new next corner space is because this last step tells me that I can repeat this as many times as I'd like. So when I, when I do this, if I wanted to keep going, let's say I wanted to make another round, that's when this is important, that I would just keep going. So for example, on this one, I would have just finished this and it's saying in your next space, put, you know, chain two, then three double crochet and keep doing that. So I would do it, I would have my corner in here. I would do this chain two and three double crochet in this one. And then I would do it again in this one because it says until you reach the corner space. So I would just keep doing it. And each time you would just keep growing and growing. But we're just gonna do it the one time right now. We're making a small square. So we're gonna do that chain two. We're gonna then do three double crochets into this chain two space. And then I'm gonna stop because I have reached my my um, my corner space there. And then it says, repeat from asterisk until you work all the way around. So I'm gonna go back here to this asterisk and I'm gonna do all these steps until I get back to here, the beginning, okay? So let's do that. So I'm gonna chain two. And then I'm going to three double crochets into this corner space. It's one and two and three, and then chain two. This is this piece right here that I'm doing right there in the corner space. So again, three double crochets, one and two and three and then it told me the next thing i'm going to do is chain two and three double crochets in the next chain two space so there's my next one i'm going to go ahead and get this chain two and then i'm going to do three double crochets right here so that's one that's two and then Three. Okay, and I've reached my corner space, so I'm going to go back and repeat again. Chain two, one and two, 
and then I'm going to do three double crochets. This is my corner space. So one, two, and three. And then I'm right here, gonna do the chain two and then three more double crochets, one and two, and three more double crochets. There's one, two, and three. And then it says chain two and three double crochet in the next chain two space. So let's do that. One and two. Three double crochets in this space. So that's one. Two. And three. And I worked my way all the way around, all the way around. So what am I supposed to do now? Chain two and join to top of beginning chain three and fasten off. So I'm gonna chain two, that's one and two. And I'm gonna go to the top here. And that is one, two, three. So let's go into this stitch and fasten off. Pull through and cut that. And that's my granny square. Now my granny square is all kinds of wonky with its edges right now. It doesn't look all nice and square um, because I need to just kind of, I'm gonna finger block it, meaning that I'm just gonna take my fingers and stretch it into the square that it needs to be. That's one thing I have to do. And then I've got all these strings. And so we need to take care of those. So I'll show you how I take care of those on a few of these. And then how we block it with our fingers. There are tools that you can use that help you block it. But I think for, for what we're doing today, we can do it with our fingers just fine. So for this top one right here, there's a special way that I like to end this guy. And when I do it, it helps it look just like these others here on top. So I'm gonna take my yarn and I'm gonna thread my needle. To do that, I'm gonna tie, twist it really, really, really tight, pinch it and push it through there. Sometimes that works really, really good. Sometimes it doesn't. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I've taken it and I'm I'm changing the way I'm looking at my project right now. OK. And what I want to do is I want to come on the outside and I want to come in. And then I want to come in over here through that. And then I want to come back through here this loop and fasten it off now when i do that it helps everybody look the same and now i'm going to go into the next loop and i'm just going to come through there and now i'm going to do some fast um, some weaving in of my ends when i weave in i like to go down and across a little bit and up because that helps lock the ends into place. And so sometimes my yarn is not long enough. So if you are struggling with that, leave longer tails. You can always trim them off. So I'm just going to take and just carefully place my needle through these loops as I go back down. Okay. Pull that through real carefully, not too hard because I don't want to pull it out if I don't have to. Now I'm going to go in a few of these loops right here. Pull that so I can pull it through real carefully. And then I'm going to go back up 
Oh, it came out. So what I'll do here is I'm just going to take my needle and I'm going to go ahead and get it started where I want to go. And now I will take and thread my needle. If I can just get a little bit, that helps. Okay, so I've done that. And I don't want to leave an end right there. So I'm going to take and I'm going to go back down this way, twist it again, and get that tight end and push it through there. Oh, you can do it, friend. There we go. Come back through. And I would like to leave my end tucked right in this area here. So I'm gonna just go in through that. I'm going to, once again, let's see if I twist that anymore. Get it in there. Oof, wiggle, wiggle. And then I pull it through. Now, I don't wanna leave that end hanging out, right? So what I'll do is I'll take, and I'm gonna pull just a little bit. See how it's pulling that? Right there, I'm pulling just a little bit, and I'm going to now take and very carefully snip this off. I don't want to cut my project to just that little tail. And now I pull this back into place, and it sucks that end right back in there. All right, so that's how I do my ends. But let's talk about how you finger block. Now, we know the end result is we want a square. So what I do is I just stretch it a little bit. Just take it and stretch it into place. So I'm holding down right here while I'm kind of pulling on that corner. And I'm just going to get everybody lined up like they should be. Go. Almost there. I think that's pretty good for us for now. That will work. There we go. Okay. So you would want to obviously go ahead and finish off those ends. And I will also do that later. I will finish off all those ends. But that is how we read a pattern, a crochet pattern. So like I said, a lot of our patterns will have a key for us. So let's look at this pattern real quick before we end our time together. So here we've got our key and it tells us that a chain is a CH, a single crochet is an SH, a half double crochet is an HDH, and a slip stitch is an SL space ST. So when we look at the pattern itself, we see that that R and D means round one, and that R S means right side. We don't see that in our key, but that's what that means. And it tells us that C H, we see that H D H half double crochet, we see slip stitch, um, and there's gonna be a single crochet somewhere. Oh, there it is, single crochet. Now, one thing that this pattern also has is a diagram. So it shows us this really pretty picture. And it gives us different colors for the different rounds. So we've got with a color, and they've said that the colors, this is the colors that they used. And so A would be here with A, do this, and then there's their A color. So then they show you all the stitches that they do with that A color. What um, are those stitches? Well, that's what this little symbol is. So this little symbol means chain. So anytime I see that little loop there, I know that that's a chain. So when I look at this pattern, I see one, two, three, four, five chains. Let's see if that's what it says in the instructions. Right there, it says with A, chain five. So see how that works? That picture shows us to chain five. And then it shows us the next Row, we're going to fasten off that dot tells us to fasten off and then it says chain two and then I'm going to chain one and I'm going to do this long T right here. What's that long T? That long T is a half double crochet. 
So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to um, chain and I'm going to do it a half double crochet again and a chain. And so these patterns, um, this pattern in particular tells you in words and in pictures how to create this design right here. So the next time you're wanting to do a fun project, but you don't have a video to watch, instead you have a book or an instruction sheet like this, you know how to do it because we've talked about how to read those patterns. Guys, I am so excited for you all to be able to continue your crocheting journey by reading patterns and even making some fun granny squares. That's what these are called, granny squares. You can connect them and you can make all sorts of things. I hope you guys have had a wonderful time with this project and I look forward to working with you again. See you soon.